Oh, we welcome him to the Buttonwood United Methodist Church family. Amen. Let's get him out
to thank him and to worship him this morning. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have a beautiful video presentation, uh, followed by that, and I'm just going to ask my presenters then to start just getting in line to be prepared for the next event. Amen. Grace and peace, I'm Pastor Joseph Robertson. And I'm Lady Denise Robertson. And we're just here to congratulate our friend, my brother, Pastor Sean M. Lee, on his recent elevation and new assignment. Pastor Sean, we are so proud of you. and We are looking forward to nothing but success. We know that God has ordered your steps. And you and that congregation, as you all are blending together and getting to know each other, we feel like you're just on this wonderful journey. Seems like just yesterday we were college roommates. Now God has placed you at this new level. I'm looking forward to the next thing that God has for your life. It's going to be exciting to see. We are here for you, leading you on, looking forward to the fellowship in many, many years to come. We love you and God bless you. God wrote it in his plan. What's up, Buttonwood? Antoine Oakley here, uh, and I am thrilled. Uh, I'm proud, and I feel privileged to be able to uh, add my uh, voice to the chorus of congratulations and well wishes for Pastor Lee as he begins this new assignment as lead pastor of uh, Buttonwood United Methodist Church. Uh, and when I tell you Buttonwood, uh, you could not have a more solid, man of God whose uh, moral compass is always pointed in the right direction uh, to lead you at this important time. And so uh, to my boy, my friend, my compadre, uh, my old school homie, <laughs> uh, love you, man. Uh, congratulations and looking forward to uh, your leadership there at Buttonwood. God bless. We want to send a very special congratulations to you, Pastor Lee, as you get ready uh, for another leg of your journey. We thank God for you. You have been such a great servant. And as the Lord Jesus has taught us, if we're going to be a great leader, you got to start off being a great servant. And you have certainly been a great servant. I thank you for the 15 years that you have served me and your service to others, how you from a child, you were serving, you were ministering, you were a blessing to so many. Now comes the time that you to take the leadership and God will be with you. He will continue to use you in a great way. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, New Destiny Fellowship, my wife, I, we love you. We're praying for you. We support you. Continue to keep on doing the work of the Lord. Love you. Good morning and congratulations to Pastor Sean Lee. Uh, we are here in the last day of session here in Dover and Delaware General Assembly. I want to take this time to congratulate you and the historic Buttonwood United Methodist Church. I am so glad to have you in the second senatorial district where I am privileged to serve. I look forward to the great things that will take place in the Buttonwood community under your leadership, the great members of the historic Buttonwood Church. God bless you. This is Minister Ronald L. Thornton from Greensboro, North Carolina. May God bless you, Pastor Sean Lee, my brother, on your new kingdom assignment. We pray that the Lord continue to give you strength for your assignment. I have no doubt that you are going to work this. I pray that the Lord continue to give you the tenacity and the energy to lead God's people to that promised land. May God bless you. Can't wait to fellowship with you. Move people into substance abuse treatment centers than anybody in the history of our great state of Delaware. But I'm here today to talk about a celebration. This is a celebration of elevation. Now, my friend Sean Lee, 
taught me a long time ago. He said, you're standing at a precipice. He's at a precipice. Look. On July the 3rd, he becomes the lead pastor of the Buttonwood United Methodist Church and Buttonwood congregation. Get ready. Get ready. This is a man who loves lost, least thought about, and the left out. He wants to be about God's work. And I know you all want a pastor, desire a pastor, who can preach, teach, lead, but care and love on his people. God bless you, Pastor Lee. Before Spiel was started. <laughs> <laughs> Dear friends, today we welcome Reverend Sean Lee, who has been appointed to serve as our pastor. We believe that he is well qualified and has been prayerfully appointed by our bishop, Latrell Miller Easterling. Pastor Sean, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God a minister of the sacraments, and a sustainer of the love, order, and discipleship of the people of God. Somebody's phone. That's his phone. This time. for some medicine. Today I affirm this commitment in the presence of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayer, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, will you celebrate this new beginning, support and uphold Pastor Sean in these ministries? We are finally on a commitment to support you, our presence, gifts, service, and witness. How beautiful among the mountains are the feet of the messenger. Who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Reverend Sean as our pastor. Give him and give him and us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus. Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
purchase water and baptize new Christians in this place. Amen. Take this bread and cup and keep us in communion with Christ and his church. Pastor Jones, use this hymnal, hymnal and book of worship to guide us in our prayer and pray. Amen. Amen. as a congregation, and we repeat this prayer together. Lord God, bless the ministries of your church. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have bestowed upon us. Draw us together in one spirit that each of us may do as members of the body. May your word be proclaimed with faithfulness. And may we be doers of your word and not hearers only. As we who have died and risen with Christ in baptism gather at his table and then scatter into the world, may we be one in service to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're now going to have Pastor Sean. resulting in increased engagement 
of laity in the ministries of the congregation, a balanced budget, and payment of mission share apportionment in full each year. Collaborates with staff laity to envision, develop, organize, and implement a plan for radical hospitality towards members and guests that will result in more regularly in church attendance and engagement beyond Sunday morning. Collaborates with the pastoral team to develop pastoral care for members, strengthens and grows the young adult and youth ministry program. Supports attendance of Pastor V at all official district and conference clergy gatherings, including workshops, trainings, and conferences. We hope you and your new pastor will be able to sing and live the words of the beautiful hymn, We Are the Church from the United Methodist Hymnal. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. With many kinds of people, with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, for, from many times and places. For I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we are the church together. <coughs> this is yours in Christ, Bishop Latrell Miller Easterling, and Shalom Peace from Reverend Joseph W. A. Archie the Third, Delaware District Superintendent. Let's just give our note.
yet because we still got work on this side of Zion to do. I'm not tired yet. And believe it or not, while we were singing that mm -hmm. do, I'm not tired yet. I was like, Lord, please give me enough breath to go ahead and do the scripture when I get done. <laughs> We are now going to go into our scripture reading for this next service. Our first scripture lessons will be coming from the second Kings, fifth chapter, one through fourteen. And I will be reading from the NIV version. Subtitle is Naaman Hill of Leprosy. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Arab. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aaron. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Arab had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Abraham replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robe and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robe, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and far far the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Amen. Amen. Our second reading will be coming from the sixth chapter of Galatians, verses 1 through 18. First subtitle, Doing Good to All. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, and whoever sows to <coughs> their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. 
Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me to trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. For the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I'm sure you have seen on your program that we are for our Somatic Selection. We're going to have a wonderful sister come before us, which is Tracy Harris, as she sings for us this morning. Pray with her and for her as she brings us this special selection. And then that will be followed by the man of the hour, Reverend Sean M. B. Let the church say amen. Amen. Same tree. <laughs> praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Come on, in this moment, can we just give God praise for this is the day? I'm honored to be here today to celebrate this occasion with my friend and my brother who has been faithful over a few, and the Lord has elevated him. But would you have a pastor after God's own heart? Would you just celebrate God for that? Someone who cares, who will lead you and guide you into God's truth. And I just came to celebrate God today. He is so worthy of our praise. He is everything that you could ever need or want, God is. Yes, he is. 
for a moment. Why don't, why don't we just uh, lift our hands towards heaven? Father, we give you praise on today. Just close your eyes, don't look at anybody. We worship you because he is our all in all. He's our everything. And because you are everything, Father, we just give you complete control of our life. You are the center of everything that we do. You are the center of everything that we do, and we give you total praise. Good morning, Buttonwood. Good morning, Buttonwood. Good morning, Buttonwood. Listen, y'all got up too early in the morning. You know what I mean? To come out here to worship God for y'all to be this quiet. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise.
give up. My subject for today is the power of if. The power of if. Let us pray. Eternal and almighty God, be with us today as we bring forth your word. Let us learn something new through the word of God that may help us in this journey called life. Bless the hearers of your words that they may become doers. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. 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 Have you ever had someone say this famous phrase, what if I did so and so? Or, or, or uh, have you heard this, this phrase simply said, uh, what if I so and so, how would that outcome come? It seems like there is always an if that is stopping things from moving forward. However, there is always power in an if. July 4th, 1951, Florence Chadwick waited and there's a walk into the water of the Catalina Island. She intended to be the first woman to swim the 21 miles from the island to California coast. Long distance swimming was not new to her. She had been the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions. The challenge that day was not so much the distance, but the bone chilling waters of the Pacific. Making things more difficult, a ditch fall and a fall, had fallen over the entire area and was so thick, she could hardly see the boats in front of her and behind her. The boats were there to help her on the course and to keep the sharks away. Her mother was in the front boat. Her trainer was in the back with a few others. She swam on and on, never seeing further than the boat ahead of her. She began to complain about the water. She wanted to get out. Her mother cheered her on. She swam a little further. And then she said she was simply done. Later, she told a reporter that if I could have seen the land, I might have made it. Her trainer had cheered her on, but she instead was done. After 15 chilling hours in the water, Chadwick had gave up only to discover a few minutes later she had, a few minutes later, that she had quit within a half a mile of her goal. Later she reported that if she could only see the land, she might have made it. So in 1952, she attempted this again. Once more, a misty veil obscured the coastline, and she couldn't see the shore, but this time, she made it because she kept reminding herself that the land was there. With that confidence, she bravely swam on and achieved her goal. In fact, she broke the men's record by two hours. Have you ever felt like Florence? <laughs> felt like you can't see the land. Have you ever felt like Florence? Everything uh, is going on around you. Have you ever felt like so much is going on that you felt overwhelmed in your life? How many ever felt overwhelmed uh, uh, by the job, overwhelmed by your kid, overwhelmed by your house, dudes, overwhelmed by your spouse? Come on, some of y'all overwhelmed by your own churches. <laughs> Paul said in Corinthians, 15 and, uh, 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, 
unmovable, always abiding in the word of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Have you ever felt like giving up or quitting? I have. Have you ever uh, felt like just throwing in a towel? Well, I have an antidote for that. Because guess what? We as believers, sometimes you feel like throwing in a towel. But when you feel like quitting, it's as simple as this. Just don't. <laughs> ah, all you got to do is not give up. Come on now. Calamity and catastrophe. Uh, the, the, uh, the definitions are actually the same thing. An event causing great and often sudden damage or distress or disaster. Isn't it funny how uh, we hear these two words and we often think of one thing uh, being worse than the other. And oftentimes we look at our situation as if that it's the first time that this has ever happened. Uh, but I come to tell you today that your situation isn't the first time that this has ever happened. And understand something, that your, your, your worst day is somebody's best day. Right when you think that it's, it's gone the worst, guess what? That is somebody's best day. Understand that God is, it has organized your life and orchestrated your life. We all have been under pressure in life before. Pressure is something that will break you down. Pressure is that thing that will make you throw in the towel. Pressure is that thing that will make you throw your hands up. But I also have an antidote for pressure, and it's through the word of God. Psalms 118 said, he called, I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. And the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man shall do upon me. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings of eagles. They shall run and not, and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Pressure is the thing that will make you seek God. Do I have anyone that has been under pressure in their life before? I'm talking about that real kind of pressure. I'm talking about uh, when you don't know how you're going to pay your bill pressure. I'm talking about that kind of pressure that, 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 that when you, come on, say, they say, your, your money looking kind of strange. How you say, you know what I mean? I'm talking about that, that, that kind of pressure when, when, you, when, 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 when you get home and, and the repo man's there. How many have been there before? Come on there. Uh, I'm talking about that kind of pressure when, you, when your husband talking funny and your wife talking funny. I'm talking about that kind of pressure that, 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 that trouble seems like it's always around you. I'm talking about when church folk looking at you like they like you funny. <laughs> Just know that only God can bring you out. We will reap if, everybody say if. If. If we do not lose heart. If we don't give up. What did I say before? The end over pressure was what? Don't give up. And the scripture says, if we what, don't what, give up. We all want the benefit of winning in life. However, some things are conditional. That condition is if you don't give up. Paul is trying to remind us that we bear each other's burdens, working for the good for all. It's easy to give up, however, if you can hold on to the if. There is power in the if. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we don't give up. What is this big if that I'm talking about today? Well, that big if sounds like this. We all have been at a place in our life where 
we even ask the what if question. How many have been, what if I do this, what would happen? Or what if I do that? Well, this big what if today is, what if you stop complaining and start saying, I can't do? What if you stop saying that it's not going to be done? But it's, what if you start saying that I am the head, come on now, y'all, and not the tail? What if you start saying, changing your language so that it aligns with the word of God? See, the problem is our language needs to change. And that what if should say, what if I can't? What if I can do all things through Christ? Yeah. One thing that I don't like is Debbie Downers around me. I don't like people always talking, talking negative. That's why I like to hang around with positive people. Because if y'all know me, and, 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 and Buttonwood, the ones that, that hung out with me a few times, we done had a ball around here. I done been offered sandpaper for, uh, for uh, when I asked for a soft call, somebody said, I'm going to give you sandpaper. <laughs> I go, I like you, okay. <laughs> you got the right one on that one. <laughs> you know why? I love the joy. When the, when, when, when the scripture says this, understand this. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No joy, no strength. That's why it's good just to laugh. I got the most comical people around me, and I and I stay I stay around people that stay around me. They gonna they gonna laugh the whole time because I like to have fun. Don't ever forget about the power of it. Close your eyes. Let us pray. Loving Father, I want to press on in my Christian life to become more and more like the Lord Jesus. I know that it will require me to put my hand to the plow and press on with patience, endurance that only comes from you. I pray that I may not lose heart or grow weary and doing the good work that you have prepared for me to do. Thank you that in due time, I may reap the fruitful reward if I do not give up. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. I'm about to extend the invitation and it's going to be done in three parts. One, you may have heard this word today and said, yeah, uh, I, I, what if I change my language? What if I change and I don't grow weary? And you just want prayer? If that's you, why don't you raise your hand? I want to pray with you right from where you are. Number two, if you desire to become a member of Buttonwood United Methodist Church, why don't you uh, slip your hand up? We want you to be a part of this growing family. We're about, yo, listen, we about to grow, y'all. You better get in now. <laughs> because later on, you might not have a seat. No! No! <laughs> Let us not grow weary. Amen. So listen, let us bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for everybody that's gathered here. We thank you for this congregation. We thank you for every individual that has gathered today. We pray, Father, that you may bless them, Father, that they may receive this word and, and this week may bring it back up for whatever situation they be going through, Father. We bless you because there is healing in your word, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. amen.
We're about to enter for our Holy Communion. Has everyone received uh, their The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a, and a good and joyful thing, always and, and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their un unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, and gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. Give it to the disciples, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this. All of you this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of, the, of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in the union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on the gifts of the bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in the final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Therefore, your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 This you may take and fall back your This is the body.
This is the blood that has been shed for us. You may drink. Amen. We have a celebration song. The Bible declares that after they had supper, they went and celebrated and sang a hymn.
Praise God first and foremost. Thanks God we got a pastor who knows what he's doing. He's a good friend of mine. And God has blessed y'all with a good man. Church believe that our mission is to be the bridge that links this church together. And before 
before this young man even started on July 1, he was already putting that out there, that we are truly going to link this community together. So I thank you, Pastor Sean, already for what you've done and the relationship that we've already formed as we go forth on this journey and see where God is going to lead this little church here in the historic part of Newcastle, Delaware. Amen. 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 And all I just to let you folks know, if you have not looked at the announcement on here, I'm not going to read everything, but I do want to highlight that on August the 7th that we are having our 75th church anniversary that we have been here in this location. We've actually been around over 100 years. We've got a back over here on uh, 1910, uh, I think that says, I, my friends can't read it, but over here. But we are having something on uh, our 75th church anniversary um, at the Executive Banquet Hall, and we would love to see some of our visitors, if they're able to, to join us. Um, uh, you can get with Pastor Sean if you need to get tickets or our address, and uh, we would just love to see your face in place. Amen. And if not, please just keep us in prayer. Amen? Amen. Prayer is so good. And we are a praying church. And you folks don't know how much we've been praying. So I truly thank again for who they have sent to us. Um, so I'm not going to go through everything in there. People can just read that. I do, however, need to uh, read a card um, for special thanks. This extra special thank you that is sent to you today. For so more appreciation than any words can say. You're among the nicest people I have ever known, and you'll never be forgotten for the thoughtfulness you show. Thanks for everything. But there'll be cards, prayer, and phone calls. Be blessed to be safe. From my brother Michael, who's been out for service for over a, a month, so we are so glad to see him in service today. And we have an upcoming birthday this Saturday of one of our members, uh, Joe Pinkett Jr., who's one of our seniors here at the church. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. 
we're gonna finalize this. We're gonna, we're gonna since the stream is over, we're gonna stop sharing because we're sharing the, the uh, Facebook. I mean, to, we're sharing to uh, Zoom. I couldn't get I couldn't get on Zoom downstairs. I don't so know why. Gonna, uh, uh, and uh, let me let me just stop this real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me finish this. All right, there you go.